Hello friends, so welcome back to Relax and Rewatch. In today's episode, we are rewatching season 1, episode 4 of Friends. The, and this episode is called The One with George Stephanopoulos. This specific episode is actually known as the first of many episodes that splits the friends in two separate storylines based on their gender. This is also the first episode where we see the girls getting drunk. This episode was first aired on October 13, 1994, and it had 19.7 million viewers. This episode was directed by James Burroughs. It was written by Alexa Chong. Alexa has also written for another one of my favorite shows, Sex and the City, along with some other famous TV shows. Despite the title of this episode, George Stephanopoulos actually does not make an appearance in it. Alright, now with all the fun facts out of the way, let's get into the episode. The gold open opens up with the gang discussing what would they do if they were omnipotent for a day. The funniest part of this scene is when Joey just comes into the central perk and he misunderstands the word omnipotent. He seems to think they are talking talking about impotence. And then when Ross says, no, Joey, omnipotence, Joey misheard that <laughs> Ross says, no, I am impotent. So then Joey is like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I, I didn't know you were impotent. It's pretty funny. I think this is the funniest part of this, this whole scene. Next, we see the intro as always, but if you notice that this intro looks a little bit different than usual, there is a reason for it. This episode's intro sequence is slightly modified in that some of the shots that are taken from this episode are actually replaced with other shots. This is the only episode where this exact intro can be seen. After this intro, we see a beautiful aerial footage of New York City. I always show, uh, enjoy the occasional New York City footage that they show in this uh, in this show. I think uh, it's one one of their way to one of their ways to establish where it's all happening. We are back at Central Park, and judging by the clothes, now it is a different day than in the cold open. Ross and Monica are amazed how Phoebe can sleep anywhere and any time. Well, Phoebe wakes up and tells Ross, Ross and Monica why she is so tired. Apparently she lives, lives with her grandmother, but her grandmother, who is deaf and insecure in bed, is having very loud sex all night with her loud and insecure deaf boyfriend. Monica is a very good friend and says that Phoebe can stay with them tonight, with her and Rachel. Joey and Chan Chan Man come in the cafe and Joey has counted that it is less than 100 steps away from their apartment. It is established at some point in the show that they do live just upstairs in the same building, in this very building where the Central Park is located at too. Well, Joey and Chandler want to take Ross to a Rangers Penguins hockey game. And uh, this leads to Ross realizing that it is October 20th today. Apparently this is a sex anniversary with Carol. First time they had sex, I guess, on October 20th. And then he gets all mopey and doesn't want to go to the game with the boys. Luckily Chandler does convince him to go. And uh, he does a little a funny <laughs> bit with his interaction with Ross. It's, I think this is the this is actually one of the funniest um, scenes with Chandler in the whole show, in my opinion. The whole little, what are you saying, big guy, huh? Huh? <laughs> that, is, that is so funny. I laugh every time I watch this scene. I would like to point out a continuity catch in this scene. I think there's a bit of an error here. Um, so this scene establishes Ross's birthday being seven months before October 20th. However, in a later episode, his birthday is established being October 18th. 
that would make it just two days ago from this date. And yet in another episode in later seasons, his birthday is established being in sometime in December. So when was Ross born and what is his real birth date? Who knows? Rachel re-enters the scene with her first ever paycheck. And we also learn that Phoebe's first ever job was at Dairy Queen. She describes the circumstances surrounding the time when she had her got her first paycheck ever. And it sounds very violent. Well, Rachel opens the envelope and she is very disappointed in the amount of money she received. And she's like, who is this FICA guy getting all my money? F-I-C-A, that is short for the Federal Insurance Contributions Act. When you pay this tax, you earn social security credits in USA. Well, like I said, Rachel is not happy, but the gang tries to encourage her and say, oh, that's totally enough to live on. Yet, everybody ends up giving her an extra tip. And Rachel clues in. She realizes what they're doing. <laughs> well, Rachel's old Fifth Avenue friends walk in. And uh, they have a bit of a conversation with her. They're catching up. And they end up looking down on Rachel, working at a coffee shop. And they even make fun of her outfit. I think they are super rude to her. Phoebe and Monica are sitting on the couch. And they witness the interaction between Rachel and her friends and they end up poking fun of the <laughs> of Rachel's friends way of talking and screaming they scream very loudly when they talk and i guess screech when there's this excited ah! the character of Joanne was played by Marion Hagan Leslie was played by Lisa Bright and Kiki was played by Michelle Mike this is actually not the last time we will be seeing this Chanel earring wearing, there is a airheaded character. <laughs> we also see her in a later episode in the, the one with the flashback. Next we see the boys walking on the street on their way to the hockey game and they walk past this fictional shoe store called jo Joan and Kenny, I think. Everything just seems to remind Ross of Carol. Even the shoes on display in this shoe store. We are back at Central Park and Rachel is sitting down with her friends. And these friends give Rachel this big come on about her life. And they're asking, when are you coming home? And like, you know, seriously gonna work here or whatever. They are extremely condescending and disrespectful to her. Rachel sticks to her guns and she says she is not coming back home, quote-unquote. Well, now apparently it's the evening and Rachel comes home to her real friends, Monica and Phoebe. Monica and Phoebe are making Tiki Death Punch. This drink includes three different types of rum. Gold rum, dark rum and white rum. It also includes strawberry syrup, pineapple juice and fresh lime juice. Don't forget to add ice for blending and lime for some garnish. So if you are of legal drinking age, there is a little uh, drink for you to try. Please do drink responsibly if you are a drinker. Well, as soon as Rachel hears that this drink has some rum in it, she grabs the whole smoothie container and starts drinking it right out of it with a straw. Monica establishes that they are having a slumber party now that Phoebe is staying with her. They have Twister, raw cookie dough, they have an operation with no tweezers. Sounds like a great time, I'm in. Well now the landline phone is ringing, Monica picks up and apparently it's Visa calling for Rachel because they want to know if she's okay. I guess she hasn't been using her visa card and they are worried about her. When Monica tells Rachel, they want to, I just want to know if you're okay. This is when Rachel starts really emotionally spiraling. The funniest part in this scene is when <laughs> Monica says, Rachel has left the building. I thought Courtney Cox's uh, delivery of this line is super funny. Next we see the boys trying to find their seats at the hockey stadium. 
uh, I guess everything still reminds Ross of Carol and Chandler is starting to get a little pissy with him. Now at the girls apartment, Monica and Phoebe are trying to cheer Rachel up. They remind her that you are independent, you're doing great in life. But Rachel is not sure if she has made the right choice by leaving Barry and trying to make it on her own instead. Phoebe compares Rachel to Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> She believes Rachel did make the right choice by leaving Barry and she will find something better. She will have an even happier ending than she thought. It will just look different than it was originally going to. Then Rachel asks, what if there is no happy ending for everyone? And then Monica and Phoebe start spiraling too and they get depressed. Next, in the hockey arena, we see Ross getting hit in the nose the, with, with a hockey puck. And to add to the embarrassment, they show him in the big screen in the arena, holding his nose. Gee, thanks guys. So the boys end up taking Ross to the hospital, like the good friends that they are. And there is a very funny triage nurse. <laughs> she is making a complaint call about a chocolate bar that promises nutty goodness. I guess it wasn't nutty and good enough for her. This triage nurse was played by Mary Pat Clearson. Back at the girls' apartment, Phoebe and Rachel are drinking. Monica is shown eating raw cookie dough, and she is even shown throwing some cookie dough on the floor, which to me doesn't seem like something Monica would do, or at least if she would do that accidentally, I think she would actually pick it up right away. The girls have ordered some pizza. Rachel opens the door to the pizza delivery guy, only to find out that it, it is the wrong order. It is a mushroom, green pepper, onion pizza. And they had ordered fat-free crust with, with extra cheese. This pizza belongs to George Stephanopoulos. Monica and maybe Phoebe seem to be the only ones who knows who this person is. George Monica tells Rachel that George is a White House advisor, Clinton's uh, campaign guy. They end up spying on him in the, in the big picture window. The boys are still at the hospital, but they are getting very restless. Chandler even tries to butter up the re receptionist or the triage nurse, and it turns into a very funny scene. This also is one of my all-time favorite Chandler scenes. Very funny. Next up is a scene that I guess, according to the internet, is only in the DVD version, which is how I am watching this show for my rewatch. So from what I gathered is that if you are watching Friends on some streaming services, this scene is not included. In this scene, the girls are having more tiki death punch drinks on the balcony. On the balcony. Uh, they, they talk about the guys and what they would be like as lovers. Uh, they uh, think that Joey would be a very tender lover. And right after this, they show a scene of Joey being very rough with a vending machine. Interestingly enough, Monica thinks that Chandler is more sophisticated than you guys give him credit for. And then right after, we see a scene at the hospital <laughs> where he's being very silly with the triage nurse again. And Rachel thinks that Ross is probably very smooth. And then we see a scene of him throwing water on himself, not being so smooth and cool. In the next scene, Ross is still sulking at the hospital. And uh, Chandler is losing his cool. He's saying that he's going to need painkillers after listening to Ross this long, whining about his failed marriage. A uh, background catch I have <laughs> during this scene is a uh, is there's a milk vending machine in the background in the ER waiting room, which I found interesting. Milk vending machine? Are those a thing? Were those a thing? And now we see girls at the balcony again. They are revealing secrets. Monica tells Phoebe that the uh, quote-unquote vegetarian pate she made was actually a goose pate. Phoebe says that she slept with uh, Monica's ex, Jason Hurley. We actually uh, hear Jason Hurley referenced to again in uh, season 2, episode 19. 
next we see Rachel dropping a pillow off the balcony and uh, from what I read online this actually was not scripted this is something that just happened and they just left it in well after she drops the pillow Rachel re reveals that a valentine a Monica had in her locker was from Rachel not Tom I guess Tom was someone Monica liked and was very excited to get a valentine from him Rachel also body shames Monica here, saying that, oh, she was very big. Uh, Monica reveals that Rachel beat her pants in seventh grade. They keep fighting and going back and forth until they spot George Stephanopoulos again. They are kind of creepy. They are using binoculars to watch him. Not cool, girls. Not cool at all. Well, now it's Ross is all fixed up. And this a super unprofessional triage nurse makes fun of his nose cast. It's insane. What kind of nurse is she? Is she? Chandler thinks Ross looks like he's from Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs was a 1999 film, so it was relatively new, I guess three years old, when this episode was filmed. Ross realizes a kid in the waiting room has taken his hockey puck. He starts fighting with the kid and the buck actually goes flying in the air and it flies and hits the triage nurse right in the face the same way it did Ross. This bratty little boy that Ross fights with was actually played by Benjamin Kaya. Next we see all the friends playing Twister at the girl's apartment. Uh, someone rings the doorbell and Chandler opens. Someone is bringing the pillow that Rachel dropped earlier in the episode. Chandler looks confused, and I am confused too. How would this guy know where, where, where does this pillow originate from? What apartment would it be from? Nevertheless, I could not find the name for the actor who plays this pillow returning guy. If you do know it, please let me know. And maybe we can add it to the bio of this video, since uh, it won't be included in this video, because I couldn't find any inf information on this actor. Chandler is having some ticket death punch as well. When the phone rings, he answers and Visa asks for Rachel again. However, this time Rachel agrees to talk with the Visa people. She assur assures them that she is fine. And she smiles as sh she watches her friends playing Twister. She seems very happy and content. This is a very nice and happy ending to this episode. So in my first Relax and Rewatch episode, I said I would be dragging the KitchenAid mixers <laughs> in Monica's kitchen. And in this scene, I can spot a black mixer on her countertop. So this was a very funny little episode. Uh, I think Chandler was the funniest. He was the comedy of this episode. And I would say Rachel's storyline was the heart of this episode. Also, I forgot to mention earlier that the pizza guy who delivers the pizza to the girls' apartment was played by Sean Whalen. Alright, so in the next episode I will be watching the Friends Season 1, Episode 5, the one with the East German laundry detergent. In that episode, Phoebe and Chandler decide to break up with their significant others at the same time while Ross and Rachel have their first date ever doing a laundry together. It is a very important episode. Uh, it establishes more of the romantic dynamic between Ross and Rachel. I cannot wait to rewatch it and do another review video like this. So stay tuned. Bye!